So despite the fact that Abraham Lincoln and Mary Todd Lincoln were married for more than 20 years, uh, we have hardly any letters between them. Uh, we have hardly any documentary evidence about their relationship. It makes sense in some way. They were living together. They didn't need to write to each other. Uh, over the course of their life, however, they produced and we have kept or they have survived about a dozen letters between them or telegrams. This one that I'm about to try to conduct a close reading with from April of 1848 is probably, out of those dozen or so documents, the richest, the most significant, the most valuable insight we have into the contemporary nature of their relationship from a document between the two of them. It's a letter that Abraham Lincoln wrote to his wife on April 16, 1848. He's a first-term member of Congress, and he is writing to her because she has returned after spending some time with him and their two young boys in Washington. And the opening line is, is a rich one. In this troublesome world, well, I should begin this way. Abraham Lincoln writes to her, Dear Mary, Dear Mary, in this troublesome world, we are never quite satisfied. When you were here, I thought you hindered me some in attending to business. But now, having nothing but business, no variety, it has grown exceedingly tasteless to me. So that opening captures something that's really complicated about any marriage in any era of history, but in particular about the Lincoln marriage. They were together, and clearly there was something that uh, bothered the congressman about his wife and the boys getting in his way, so he sent them back home, and once they're gone, he misses them. He says, I hate to sit down and direct documents. I hate to stay in this old room by myself. You know I told you in last Sunday's letter I was going to make a little speech during the week, but the week has passed away without my getting a chance to do so, and now my interest in the subject has passed away too. Now some of that might be a little embellishment that one uh, husband uh, makes to his wife, but Lincoln is clearly trying to convey to her, and by using words like hate, that he is really frustrated and lonely in Washington. He says, your second and third letters have been received since I wrote before. Dear Eddie thinks his father is gone, quote, Tapala. Now historians and uh, documentary editors have pondered over this one. We think he means uh, that his father has gone to the Capitol. And this was little Eddie Lincoln's way of saying that as an infant child. Uh, but nobody is entirely sure. Has any further discovery been made as to the breaking into your grandmother's house? If I were she, I would not remain there alone. This is a uh, husband and wife commenting on family news. He continues on asking about an uncle. Uh, then he reports on errands that he was supposed to run, shopping. He says, I went yesterday to hunt the little plaid stockings as you wished, but found that McKnight has quit business and that Alan has not a single pair of the description you give. These are unimportant lines in every other way except for the fact that it just shows the ordinary kind of intimate, regular nature of the Lincoln marriage in 1848. He says, I thought these would fit Eddie's dear little feet. I have a notion of making another trial tomorrow. He also reported on his own personal shopping. He says, very soon after you went away, I got what I think a very pretty set of shirt bosom studs, modest little ones, jet or black, set in gold, only costing 50 cents a piece or $1.50 for the whole. Then he does something interesting that might have deeper meaning in terms of people's perceptions of Mary Lincoln or the marriage in general. He says to his wife in this letter, suppose you do not prefix the honorable to the address on your letters to me anymore. Now this requires a little background knowledge to really understand what he's getting at here. Uh, but back in those days, congressmen had a franking privilege which allowed them to send mail for free. Uh, the honorable was the prefix for an elected official like a congressman. And Lincoln is suggesting to Mary that um, she's trying to save money by putting the honorable on her letters when it's unnecessary. He says, I like the letters very much, but I would rather they should not have that upon them. It is not necessary, as I suppose you have thought, to have them to come free. And then he turns and asks her about her health. Are you entirely free from headache? That is good, good, considering it is the first spring you have been free from it since we were acquainted. He's referring to Mary Lincoln's health problems, which were recurring and had a dramatic impact on her mood and her relationships with everyone, including her husband. I'm afraid you will get so well and fat and young as to be wanting to marry again. Now, this requires a little bit of interpretation, but in the 19th century, to be fat was to be prominent and prosperous and was also a form of uh, uh, appeal 
in terms of body uh, image. Uh, nowadays, it's hard for people to imagine that, but to be fat and stout was not always to be considered uh, to be ugly or wanting in image, and Lincoln is referring to that here. In fact, he goes further and tells her, get weighed and write me how much you weigh. I think you can interpret this. There's no concrete way to know exactly what he's getting at here, but I think it suggests the tone, suggests um, uh, an intimate, teasing, playful quality to their relationship that suggests the healthy nature of their marriage, at least at this point. And then Lincoln ends with something that's very significant in terms of people's perceptions of him over the years. He says, I did not get rid of the impression of that foolish dream about dear Bobby, their oldest son, Robert, till I got your letter written the same day. Lincoln was someone who had dreams, yet very rarely does he write about them at the time they happen. This is one of the few instances where he refers to a dream. We have lots of recollected accounts about dreams, some of which were very ominous and portentous later when he was president, that Lincoln, or that people claimed Lincoln had. But, he, you know, uh, most of us are skeptical about how much to believe in those recollected accounts. However, this letter from 1848 refers to a dream. Lincoln was someone who dreamt and took those dreams seriously enough that when he was worried about them. He wrote about them or asked his wife to act on them. And later, he called it foolish. But at the time, clearly, it worried him. He said, don't let the blessed fellows forget father. Ends his letter to his wife, most affectionately, A. Lincoln. A letter like this doesn't allow us to make any firm conclusions about the marriage between Mary and Abraham over the course of their two plus decades together. But it does give us insights that are worth focusing on when we try to figure out how to describe him as a family man, a husband and a father. And you see many dimensions at play when you read a letter like this carefully.